Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Some of you already know me. I'm Jenny. I'm a fellow here. And I just wanted to give a quick talk about um, front end animation tools. So, recently, um, or rather when I started the fellowship, I was tasked with making um, an, a scroll animation of a student's journey through Full Stack Academy. And um, yeah, so you can actually visit it at journey.fullstackacademy.com. Uh, don't look at it now. It doesn't look very good on the phone, to be honest. <laughs> but um, it's functional and works on the desktop. So yeah, so um, before I decided uh, how I was going to build this, um, I did a lot of research into various animation technologies. And I went through a good week of just playing with different tools, like all of these, and none of them <laughs> were very easy to use. <coughs> so then uh, when I finally came across this one animation that was built with uh, scroll magic and GSAP, um, I was just like, ooh, this is pretty straightforward. So I'll, get, I'll use those. So uh, what GSAP is, is uh, GSAP actually stands for GreenSock Animation Platform, and it's it's very, very straightforward, very easy to use. You don't have to have all that much JavaScript experience to even um, understand how it works. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it handles tweening and timelining, which is the two major things that um, basically happen during uh, animations. And before, um, if you were to animate something, uh, the, I guess, you can do it with classic jQuery, like vanilla jQuery and um, CSS animations, but it's like a whole chunk of code and a ton of nesting in order to just do something very simple. But with GSAP, um, tweening is just like one line of code. It tells you to go from one class to another. And timelining, you can um, basically sequence the tweens. So uh, what a tween is, is actually just um, all the in-betweens of two stopping points and like or creating that effect of transition between two stopping points so that it seems as if it's like a smooth transition. So that's literally what a tween is. And oh, okay. And then um, I have scroll magic, which is this um, library that handles that easily handles uh, interactions with user scroll events. So um, in terms of stro scroll events, it's actually, if you've ever played with it in um, regular JavaScript, it's very hard to handle, but uh, they've pretty much abstracted everything for you in this library, and you basically just tell them, hey, at this scroll duration, or like at this trigger, when you hit a certain div, start doing something. And that's pretty much it. Um, it also makes parallax much easier. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have seen like parallax or have played with parallax, but what it happen, what happens with parallax is that it basically is um, you kind of look at a scene and it kind of makes it feel as if there's like a dimension or a 3Dness to what you're looking at, even though it's just like just different layers of divs. So, so yeah, so that's parallax. It makes parallax very easy to do because it abstracts everything for you in terms of um, how to handle scroll events. So that's about it. And um, now I'll actually go into a live demo of how to do certain things with um, scroll events and tweening. Uh, okay. So, <coughs> this is um, something that, so what happens here? <laughs> um, so I'll, I've actually uh, built this out, but um, 
would you guys rather just see what goes on, or would you rather see like the code of how to actually do it? Well, like, the other yeah. huh? You just like go and scroll yeah, through this. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens here? The first two um, demos are actually uh, with GreenSock, and the other two are actually with pure class toggles, which means that um, they don't actually do. I don't actually use any uh, front end like interaction things. So yeah. So just showing you that, let me uh, pull up the code for it. So if I've already pre-made um, Uh, the HTML and the CSS styling is already all there, so I won't show you that. But what happens is you set a... Can you guys read this? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I don't know if there's any, not that much I can do with the lights because um, I think that they have to be on to be able to record. So yeah. Uh, let's see if I can change a theme to like show the contrast better. <coughs> uh, I think we'll just stick with this. That's all right. <laughs> this is okay. All right. So um, in the first example, we have a um, div with the text "I am the Hulk" in it, and what happens is that when you hit this trigger, um, trigger div, it starts the animation. So what, what I, how, how to actually do this is, ooh. Um, so you start by initiating a controller, which is con what controls the scroll events. And then you uh, basically create a scene, which is, you do like, you set it to a variable. And then you have um, a new scene, and you enter the trigger element as trigger one, and you set the tween of animate one, which is like this div, to <coughs> um, half a second. So in the set tween, uh, the first one takes the actual um, div that, or whatever it is that you're trying to tween, and it sets how long it will tween. And what, and the third parameter is what you, um, it takes an object and it's just like basically what you want it to do. So right here it has no duration. Um, and I have this add indicator thing which is literally these two little uh, indicators. So what happens is that when you hit this. So right here at the start of this is where the trigger div is. And this is the animate div. And when it hits, um, as soon as it hits that, it basically just starts animating. And the last piece you actually need is just to add it to the controller. And that's all you need to basically get this to do this. Now, the second example is to turn this div into a Smurf. But as you can see, um, the farther down I am in the, um, the actual duration, uh, the more smurfy it gets. <laughs> so this example actually has a duration of uh, 300 pixels. So for this one, um, I'll just name it scene two. Uh, the trigger element's the same thing. I just set it with a duration of 300, or rather, yeah, 300 <coughs> pixels. And you just set tween. You're tweening the second element, which is I am a Smurf. And you change the background color to blue. And the scale is, um, you're shrinking it to half its size. And you basically give it a border up top that makes it look like the Smurf <coughs> hat, I guess. <laughs> And, and then I also added the indicator. The indicator is actually just a, um, a little add-on that scroll magic has to show you where the events start and end, and it's very helpful for debugging. 
and all you do is you just need to add it to the controller and it works. So, so what happens is that um, in the duration that you're uh, tweening, it, takes, it will take up the entire duration to actually tween this. So when you actually hit the end, that's when it actually becomes fully um, transformed into the whatever you, the ultimate like look you want it to be. So yeah. So that's the two examples with tweening. Um, I'll show you two without GSAP, which is basically just done through like toggling the classes or adding a class. Um, where is it? Okay. So this one, it, I basically add a class in which it kind of flattens this guy out and expands it. So, yeah. Uh, so in this one, uh, it has this scene, which is trigger three, very um, straightforward. So what happens is um, in, you create a scene as well, and you set the trigger element, which is um, whatever, wherever it hits that you want the animation to start. And you just call this method called set class toggle on the scene that you just created. And you tell them in the first parameter how you, or which item you want to animate. And this is the class name that you want to add, it, add to it in the second parameter. So, um, and then I just added the <coughs> indicator to like help me see where it actually happens. And, and then you add it to the controller. And in the zap class, I literally just wrote transform scale 2.5 with, and yeah. So, when you hit the trigger, it just zaps. That's that one, and here's the last one. Let me actually add another spacer div. Uh, so for the last one, um, it's also creating a scene, but here, um, Telling, setting the the item that I'm trying to animate with um, jQuery, just calling it like animate for and setting it to a variable so that I can um, easily style it. Uh, and I create a scene first. I I set the trigger element, which is like the same as usual. Um, you can set it to whatever, and this is basically you can do whatever you want to any of the DOM elements with any of this. So um, and I set the duration to 100. And when you enter, it turns the background color to gray. And when you <coughs> leave, the background color, just like, I get rid of it. So it's whatever um, its parent background color is. And I add the, add the indicator of like where it happens. And you just add it to the controller. And let me refresh it. So in here, so when you hit this, it, <coughs> this is on enter. So on enter, you have it turn gray, but when you leave, it turns it back. And the duration literally just means like how, how far to scroll before um, it changes again. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's um, everything that I have to demonstrate. And uh, I hope this helps if you guys are trying to do anything with like animations or um, just styling in general. Because I know you guys are, uh, for the juniors at least, you guys are doing um, front end work this week, right? Okay. So, yeah. So, that's it. Oh. <laughs> you had a question?